Hello there, this is Jonathan with DSS Motion bringing you another Mega Box review. This time looking at perhaps the most unique Halo set from the summer line this year. It is the Dual Mode UNSC Warthog. This is set number DPJ92. It has 330 pieces and should retail for around 20 to 25 pounds. Now, as I just said, this set is pretty unique in that you get the Warthog figures, of course, but you get a lot of little unique pieces that you can customise and modify the Warthog with. There is a set way that it does tell you how to do in the instructions, uh, but I don't see why you can't just mix and match the parts to create some weird, strange Warthog that you enjoy. So taking a look at the Warthog itself, uh, as I mentioned, you get the unique parts. You get some sort of cage door system that folds down. I will attach these all later so you get an idea of where they go. Uh, a new heavy ram bumper kind of thing with some extra lights. Some armoured uh, panelling that can go on the sides. You also get an alternate turret that you can plug in. And also some decaled side panels that you can just plug in and swap out here. Um, it's like some sort of hornet wasp thing. Um, so you can basically give it an actual fire team kind of related theme. Um, or you can just put them on there or leave them off depending on how you like them. Like I said, there is a set way to build this warthog in terms of which um, add-ons you put on. Um, but I don't see why you can't just uh, mix and match. So if you like the wasp logos but you don't like the... A turret that should go with them just mix and match it create what you enjoy uh, because this set is really oddly fun and it's just well, normally we get a typical warthog with a turret and some figures so it, it really is unique that they've given us this kind of variety and sort of an upgrade pack so as you can see this warthog is again another hybrid design from mega um these do somewhat annoy me um we do need halo 5 warthogs none of those have been covered they all have new turrets on the um we've not got a green gorse hog since like 2010 maybe 2009 i'm not sure um so when they just kind of mix and match across the games so like these front bars they're from um Halo 4, uh, this set kind of bar section, Halo 4. The Gorse is more reminiscent of a Halo 3 one, although it is a unique made-up design completely. Um, it's just really odd that they've kind of mixed and matched kind of looks, especially because like, the front's very Halo Reach. It, it's really weird that it's all combined. Um, some people like it, and it, don't get me wrong, it doesn't look bad. I just do wish that we would prioritise some more in-game models before we start making stuff up. Um, as with Halo 5, you've got all the rec variants, all the turret differences. Um, we've never officially got a Halo 3 style Warthog. Uh, we've not got a Halo 2 one. It would be nice to see some of those upgraded and updated or even just released for the first time. Um, there are plenty of Warthogs to do before you start getting to these kind of made up designs. Um, but I'm sure some of you will disagree because you like these kind of uh, Warthog designs that they customise for us. So if we take a look at the Warthog itself, as you can see, there is plenty of little printed design details with the UNSC logos on the front and side panels. Um, this section does lift off to reveal an engine. Uh, the downside is you've pretty much got to remove this front section to get to it, um, because it's all covered up by the windshield and this extra little clip here. Um, I will show you that in a second. We'll just rotate it round on this outside shot, though. Um, you get these little clips. These are to put accessories on, or the... Uh, modified uh, two upgrades you, these are particularly for weapon clips there's no extra attachments there so they are just to clip weapons on that you have spur uh, this gorse cannon like i said it is kind of reminiscent of the halo 3 design but it is a unique mega box build um, it's odd that they've built it because not only is um, it made from all parts as opposed to the one gorse hog part that they've just uh, designed um, it's quite heavy so it, as you can see it just kind of sags because of all the parts it's made out of uh, they should have just used the um, part that they designed where it's just one piece and the barrel plugs into it. Um, it's odd that they decided not to use it here uh, because, as I say, it just kind of ruins it. it every second you touch it, just kind of sags down. Bit of a shame, um, but there's nothing really you can do about it. Uh, if I rotate it round, you can see that it's got another fuel tank on the back. Uh, well, should I say fuel? It's, it's a water tank because uh, engines here will run off water. You get the bumper. I know a lot of people are happy about the bumper returning. They didn't like the tailgate system. Um, I, I, I like the tailgate, but the bumper's cool. It makes it just a bit more unique. The last time we saw a bumper was on um, the Halo Reach Warthog in the anti-earth gun set. Uh, you get, again, another typical antenna. Nice printed detail with the uh, lights kind of thing. They are parts with the red on. 
Um, but past that, it is just kind of a simple Warthog design. It is very different from previous releases though. Um, the build is completely overhauled in how you do it. Uh, you also get like the extra details as I rotate it over. Uh, you can see that they've added some sort of like engine and whatnot to it. A uh, little exhaust kind of thing and kind of piping that follows around. The suspension system's good. Now, interestingly enough, they've still put red bricks inside there. I don't know if you can just see them poking out underneath the bumper. Uh, they are to simulate the springs. Um, but this kind of system um, for the suspension, it doesn't move anymore. But this is closer to the Halo 4 and Halo 5 design. Um, the individual legs was exclusive to the first trilogy. Um, so I hope we see this on future Warthogs. It does make the uh, the wheels a little bit wider. As you can see, they kind of sit out more from the uh, body. Um, but still, I, I do like it. And I am a fan of accuracy, so I would like to see this on future Halo 4, Halo 5 Warthogs, definitely. Uh, as you can see here, you also get a working little toll ca cable. Uh, this just unwraps. Um, you can just pull on it, as you can see. Um, Nice little detail, completely unexpected. I, I thought the previous coiled system um, worked fine. You never see a Warthog use the uh, tow cable, so I wasn't too fussed about it. But it's a nice detail, and it just adds to the authenticity again. So I'm really glad that they've added it. So just to show off the engine detail, as I said, you do have to remove uh, the windshield um, to get to it. This then comes off. It's one piece here. Um, it does have extra pieces built onto it here, like the peg and the lights. Um, but that is like a new sculpted piece. I've never seen that kind of angular piece panel before. Um, but then, once you get inside it, it's just some nice little engine detail. Um, I don't even know if it's accurate because we've not really seen a Halo um, Warthog engine. Uh, there was one on the Jada Toys and Diecast one, um, which it does look different than that, but I, I don't know which one's particularly accurate. And since this is a made up Warthog design anyway, it can look how it wants to basically. Uh, it's just a nice detail. It'd be great to have some sort of like marine working on this or something. Um, we've never seen it before. So I do kind of welcome this kind of design. It's cool, it adds some authenticity again. It just makes it look a lot more believable as a vehicle. So taking a look at the water with its upgrade pack applied, uh, as you can see you get these little bars that fall down, they can be used as like a step up into the cabin, along with being some sort of extra protection on the side, like a roll cage. Uh, you get the nice printed uh, logos, as I mentioned, they just plug in. Uh, you also get the big heavy duty bumper, uh, this kind of hinges uh, in two places, it can move both up and down there. Um, and you also get these little side panels that you can choose how close to get to the wheels. Uh, you also get this sort of uh, rocket turret as well. It doesn't have any clasps on the back of it for a figure to grab hold of. So it is some sort of like auto turret, remote turret, something like that. Um, now this rocket here, um, that is meant to plug into that there. But unfortunately um, the clip uh, came melted. Uh, now I am exceptionally lucky with these sets. I do get a lot of broken parts. Um, yours will probably be 100% fine. Like I say, I'm just unlucky, but that would normally plug on. But to give you an idea, um, this is just a RPG head from the Call of Duty line plugged in. Um, it, it does the job well, I like it. Nice little simple rocket system. Um, I would love to know like how it's used, like an, a little like kind of like keypad or something for the uh, passenger to use to suggest that they're controlling it would be nice. Um, but otherwise, it is just a nice kind of upgrade. As you can see, you get the armoured panels on the side that swapped out for those. Uh, the gorse cannon though you can see lying down. This doesn't uh, move um, as loosely as the gorse cannon as I mentioned. So that's an improvement in my eyes. Uh, that is just way too heavy and kind of like one-sided. Um, but past that, that's the sort of upgrade you get. It does add um, to the bulkiness of the Warthog. Uh, it makes me think of like some sort of like RC car design with the oversized bumper to stop it breaking. And you know just the features of the wider wheels and the little antenna poking out. Reminds me of some sort of kind of like Rocket League remote control car kind of thing. I don't know if that's what they were going for, but I do quite like it, even if it isn't in the game itself. So taking a look at the figures, uh, and this is a brand new figure that I know a lot of people are excited about. It's the Spartan 4 Warmaster armor. Uh, you get the nice sculpted kind of skull effect into the visor here. Um, you get a painted cod piece. Um, that is a first for this line, and I really do hope this kind of catches on. Um, the way that they have been, if I just show you um, there, it's just like all a beige piece. Uh, only the top bit should be the armor color. Um, 
so they have made like attempts to make it more accurate. I'm really happy they've done that. Um, I hope that carries on as it makes these Spartans a little bit more authentic. And to be fair, minus the gold paint on the visor, there's not many paint apps on these Spartans, so I'm sure they could afford just to have that little black kind of splotch painted on, just to add to the accuracy of these armors. But overall, you get a nice new sculpted uh, chest piece and back piece. Um, it is accurate to the game. You get these nice little curved shoulder pads. We have seen these before, um, but they do pretty much do the job of the War Master armor easy enough. Uh, as you can see, it has a printed kind of wasp or hornet printed on it to match the warthog. So it is kind of suggested of some sort of fire team. Uh, these are in the core of the uh, fire team rhino that we got last year. Um, it's odd that the logo is, of course, a hornet, a wasp. Uh, so, you know, you would call it fire team wasp kind of thing. Um, but I do like this colour. The desert colour uh, is very authentic. It's believable as opposed to, say, like a pink or a red for a military colour. So I do like it. And getting the War Master armor is a nice little bonus as well. He, of course, also comes with the uh, Hydra weapon, this time in black. It's a great new weapon. Handles with the figures perfectly fine. They can shoulder it no problem. So I'm glad that we're seeing this again. Um, overall, th this figure is the key highlight from this set for me. Uh, I, do re I do really like the War Master armor. And it is a lot cooler than the other figure that we're going to now. So the second figure in the set is just a reuse of the Spartan Kelly body. Uh, this is the Hermes armor, which is what Kelly has in Halo 5. Um, this time with some sort of oceanic shoulder pad. Uh, not too keen on that. I think we've had way too many armor releases of oceanic parts. Um, so I really feel that they shouldn't have been used here just because I'm tired of them. Um, we have seen a lot of releases for them since 2014. I think it's time to let this sculpt go mega uh, do something anew and maybe bring it back in like a year or so but we've definitely got too many um, oceanic parts for sure so don't try to sneak them into uh, releases like this because Hermes armor does have its own unique pieces so it should have been included here definitely otherwise that though it is pretty much the Hermes armor just with inaccurate shoulder pads uh, you get the gold visor she comes with a pistol. It is the female body. Um, I know people are liking this female body now because it adds some diversity. So again, it's another figure that we've got in that. Um, we do need some more arms for it though because they are pretty much just reusing the um, Spartan Vale and Spartan Kelly arms at the moment, which is a bit of a shame. If we rotate it around though, again, you have the printed logo emblem on the uh, shoulder pad. Again, it's a nice little feature. Um, unfortunately, Halo 5 Spartans don't have this in game. So these are really more Halo 4 kind of Spartans. Um, if you are going for 100% accuracy, um, it doesn't really affect anything. But I just thought it was odd that they finally added logos to Spartans, but then the game has removed them. So it's a bit ironic there for Mega, I suppose. But ultimately, it's a nice, simple figure. I do prefer the Kelly version of it because I like named characters. The War Master is definitely the highlight here. But still, it's a figure that I'm sure a lot of you will like. So overall, you get a brand new Warthog here. It's a new design. It's a new fun way to build a Warthog. You get some nice new parts. You get the nice upgrade pack, which is a nice surprise. You normally wouldn't expect that on a Warthog set. So it's cool that they're adding some like kind of differences and just to make these sets stand out as we are getting pretty much a Warthog every year. So it's nice that they are incorporating some sort of variety to it. Although, as I said before, please, please, Mega, get to doing some of the uh, in-game assets as well. There's so many Warthog designs in Halo 5. They're just screaming to be made. Um, I'm sure people will agree with me for sure. Um, so I hope they do get round to them. But here, like I said, great Warthog. You get a great new figure. The other figure's great too. You know, nice unique arm. We've only seen it once before. Um, so no complaints at all. I would highly recommend this set. Um, some places probably are going to charge a bit too steep for this. They could be charging at the 25 to 30 pounds mark. Um, or dollars depending on where you live that's a bit steep in my opinion while this warthog is more substantial than previous releases definitely try and grab it for like the 20 or below mark um, while it is a fantastic set um, i wouldn't say it's worth 30 pounds in terms of value um, definitely when you compare it to like other sets at that price point but still i would highly recommend getting it when you can it's a cool set um, and it definitely adds to uh, the halo universe so that's it for this review. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
We'll be doing more Halo and Call of Duty Megabots reviews in the coming weeks. Uh, we have got the Hater Summer sets in now, so we will be reviewing those for you. Uh, they are some really fantastic sets. Mega have really upped their game this year. Um, so don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye!